Hey guys, welcome back to Tarot God New World. In today's video, I wanted to go through my best tips for progressing as fast as you can through the game. Now, being that this is a summon-based game, it's always going to be RNG on your summons, and that is going to be something that will definitely impact the way you progress. Uh, for instance, on my account, I got lucky with my hat stoops, so it helped me progress further. If you don't have that luck, you will just progress slower, but I wanted to go through all the things that you can control to help you progress further, no matter where your RNG takes you. So the first one I want to talk about is re-rolling. Now, if you don't like re-rolling, that is fine. Don't re-roll. But if you do, there are three key characters, and I made a whole video talking about this, that I think like really help you boost account. You have Data Mashni here and Data Zahard. These two SSR Pluses are fantastic because they can tank. They have invincibilities. Neither of them are a tank. One is an assassin, one is a warrior, but these are the two primary tanks in the game. And the other key unit that we have is Evan, who is the best sustained healer type unit in the game. Now, if you can reroll for one of these guys, it will be really nice. And then hopefully if you can pick up another one of them along the way through your 200 pities, or maybe you get lucky in a summon, that will really help. But having a decent account at the start is always going to be a helpful thing. Now, something else you can look for in a reroll is maybe an account where you get like four copies of your main carry, whether that be like a hats, because as we've seen, like the summon rates, you can get shafted. And if you have a really well duped up SSR that, you know, is your main carry, carry like a hat, um, it's really going to help you along the way. So re-rolling is going to give you a better start, but I understand a lot of people don't want to do that. So if you don't want to skip it, it's just down to RNG from that point. But if you do, if you don't mind re-rolling, I definitely recommend it in this game because it can get you a really nice head start. Moving on from that is going to be when we look to summoning, uh, it's, it's to do with your wish list. So what you want to do is once you set your wish list, you can feel free to swap these secondary spots around, but this first spot has the highest chance of getting your character. And what you want to do is you want to set it as the main carry. For me, originally it was hats. Now I'm looking for my second carry, which is going to be Hua. But once you set that character, don't swap that primary wish list spot for anyone else going, oh, I want a copy of that. I want a copy of that. I want a copy of that. There are a lot of good SSRs that having one copy of is nice, but the most important thing is getting duped up on your main carry. And then as you get characters that you put in these sub slots, if you've got another character that you just want a copy of for the situational usage, then you put them in these sub slots and eventually you will get them. Getting those dupes of your main carry, and I can't emphasize this enough, is the most important thing. So once you choose your main carry, stick with it. I made a whole video going over options for that main carry uh, if you want to go check that one out. But once you decide just stick with it is my recommendation until you get to like a certain point. For instance, me, I'm up to 16-4 where I need two teams. So I decided to stop looking at getting my uh, my hats maxed out and I've swapped over into my Hua because now I really need that second carry. My hats can do what he needs to at this chapter. So the four extra copies aren't really needed. What I really need is my second carry to be duped up. So that's where we're at on that one. Next one would be when you're in campaign and you're testing things um, or when you're in any aspect of the game, whether it be campaign or trial, I always recommend like, so this is the, this is the team I'm trying to win at the moment. So I'm going to try this team and if it fails, I'm going to try it again. And if it fails, I'm going to try it again. And I'm what I'm looking for is the RNG that gets me to a point, and this is going to be different depending on the deficit you're pushing. Higher deficits, it becomes harder and harder. But what happens here is you'll see that probably my Hua dies in this formation. Um, so often she will die in this when I test it, but sometimes we get the RNG where maybe she gets a dodge, something like that, and she doesn't die. And then sometimes she'll lunge to the guy at the back row because that's who she targets and if she if she doesn't miss she can one shot him and you sort of get a feel for what rng needs to happen for you to win and if you get a sniff that there's a chance that if everything falls in place correctly you might win that is when i just keep retrying forever and ever and ever like give it three hours of spamming retry i know it sounds tedious but if you're trying to push a really high deficit those are the kind of things you got to do and then eventually you might get that rng that allows 
allows you to claim the victory. But trying and trying again, the other thing is in combat is understanding the way your characters work. So for me, uh, Evan's a good one where I like putting him in a side front slot because he can take a bit of damage from an enemy. He has his pushback, which can interrupt some rogue lunges as well. Um, and then on top of that, when he drops low, he's going to put himself invisible so he can take some aggro, then avoid it, and then get get his energy up faster so that he can ult. Uh, same goes with Grey over here. If there's a melee enemy there that's going to run up and uh, attack her, it means she's going to instantly revenge and fear them. However, some situations, the enemy may one-shot the character in which they can't serve their purpose. So just experimenting. Don't just think, okay, my main tank has to go front center. Um, my supports have to go in the back. Mix around your spots, your positioning. You'll get a feel for little things and little interactions with characters. For instance, a big one that I noticed was with Evan... And this is just a, a prime example that I want to show you because there's different interactions with different characters that make huge differences. So if we jump over here and it, the, the loading screens in this game are just an absolute nightmare. But with Evan, if I put him opposite this guy who was becoming a... Uh, not him. If I put him opposite uh, this guy, this guy runs in and he'll attack Evan for a bit. Then he's going to use his lunging ability where he attacks my back row. But the timing of things work out that, so that if he attacks Evan, Evan's going to use his pushback while this guy is winding up to lunge at my back row and Evan actually interrupts this guy if he doesn't miss. So you can find out different interactions on the team that you're using and how they work with stuff like that. Um, moving on past that, uh, I also want to just mention support units. Support units are going to be great when you have a main carry. The main one I want to mention is Balm. We all get a copy of him from the pre-registration stuff and this guy is just an absolute beast at buffing a main carry unit. Um, so definitely if you've got a main carry, using those units that can really buff them up, at least one or two of them is fantastic. And he is one that I want to mention because everyone gets him for free. He is great. And as he gets more dupes, he just gets better at it. Uh, but he's great at just buffing that, that main carry target that you have on your team. The next thing I want to talk about is mercenary usage. Mercenary usage is very, very important in this game. Um, and using them effectively uh, and having the game not lag out on you is going to be super important. But uh, there we go. Mercenary usage. So once you get into about chapter 13, I think it is, 13-20, um, 13-40, 14-20, 1440, so on and so forth, they start throwing SSR plus units at you um, in the enemy teams in those in those 20 and 40 stages. And those two I find to be in general, especially once you get to that chapter 13 range, the hardest ones. So I try avoid using to try to avoid using my mercenaries on anything but those stages. Now it's a bit different now that I'm at the 16 dash four and I don't have a second team built, I'm probably going to end up using all my mercenaries at the end of the week just to punch through these stages. You can see I've got one left to use uh, in this one, but yeah, getting some decent friends with some decent mercenaries and using them at the primary times on the hardest stages, which for me, once you get to around chapter 13, it is going to be that 20 and 40 normally because they throw those SSR pluses at you that just make it more tricky. In the earlier chapters, it's just completely random, which are the hard stages, depending on what counters your team. Um, but yeah, using them wisely and not just rushing into them is the thing. I make sure I try a stage for a couple of hours and decide I can't do it before I go ahead and use it because those mercenaries, when they're almost like insta-win cheat codes, you really don't want to waste them. So using your mercenaries efficiency is an absolutely huge, huge thing. Um, moving on past that, general progression. Uh, this is a general tip, but it still applies for a lot of it. It's doing your stuff at the end of the day. So I still always make sure I do my mock battle at the end of the day because I'm still gaining a few levels. Maybe I do some summons, maybe get an upgrade in my Shinsu link. Um, I, I still do it at the end of the day because if it can push me, just push me once into that higher range of damage, then that's going to be fantastic. Another thing on that topic of things like boss battles and stuff like that in the mock battle facility, um, I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to jump into it, but manual play can really help help and this applies in campaign as well. Sometimes a character uses an ult at a bad time which pushes them into bad positioning. Playing the game on manual in campaign and in boss battles can be very very valuable especially in mock battle facility. Uh, for me when I use hats um, he always seems to on the AI on the full auto mode he uses his ult when the enemy is in the air and he just misses. So putting it on manual slowing it down and waiting for the boss to land and then using his ult to guarantee that extra damage is huge and like I said when you 
you go into campaign, playing it on manual can often be great. Normally when I play it on manual, I do put it on one si one time speed as well. But just so that you can, uh, for instance, sometimes Hua here, sometimes she will use her ultimate before she puts a path up. So normally she puts a path up to her marked enemy um, and then she goes in and everyone goes and attacks them uh, and then she'll use her ultimate on them. Sometimes her alt gauge fills up before she puts the path down. And in those situations, I retry the stage. I put it on manual. I hold off on her ultimate by like an extra two seconds so that she puts the path down and then I use the ultimate into it. So every character and every every battle is going to have different situations in which maybe manual is better but definitely experimenting with manual can help you in a lot of progression um and then the next one i want to look at is going to be upgrading gear so you can feel free to upgrade gear in this game we did we figured out that upgrading gear doesn't have losses whether it be gold or experience so if i upgrade this piece to level five then i get a yellow piece of gear i can then just feed that into it and i get all those th those bonuses that i previously had from putting it into this piece of gear the one thing that i would say is maybe don't level every piece of gear and level them evenly, not to the max. If we look over, okay, so my hat's gear at the moment for that stage is over here on my Zahard. And as you can see, I've got two yellow pieces of gear, but currently I've only got them both at plus two. The reason being is at plus two, they're, they're relatively cheap. And if I wanna go into plus three, plus four, plus five, it starts becoming a lot more expensive. You see here, like I can't even get this piece of gear maxed with all the fodder gear that I have. So it becomes super, super expensive to do them so i'd rather upgrade them all one or two times than going max on one piece and then not being able to upgrade the others at all and as you get more resources more upgrade materials more gold you can start leveling them up but especially once you start getting into the yellows um i think upgrading them evenly whether it be one level or two levels a piece is going to be very important so that's pretty much everything I have. Uh, I've probably got more tips that I could go through, but I, I feel like that's pretty good to get you, help you guys maybe start trying to push a higher deficit and stuff like that. Let me know if you guys have any other tips. If I have to, I'll make another video covering more of this type of stuff. But uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.